guys, it's Dr. DeShavo. I'm going to open up that screen in just a second and play a little Bob Marley here. Let me see if I can bring him up for you. Oh, and I just stopped it. I'm just going to stop it. I was like playing a little music before we get started. I'm going to bring up the lecture for you, which is hepatobiliary and pancreatic pathophysiology. Okay, so playing a little Bob Marley red, red wine because, as you know, too much alcohol is really bad for your liver. So really, really bad and can create a lot of problems, which we're going to start to go over some of those problems today. Um, I'm going to be breaking this lecture down into, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, maybe four 20-minute segments because I am using a new audio um, tape, okay? So bear with me because I'm kind of new with this and it might be a little rocky um, as we go. So here we go. Hepatobiliary and pancreatic pathophysiology. I'm going to go through, I'm thinking about eight slides here. And then we'll do, like I said, 20-minute segments until I get used to this program. So hope you guys are doing great. Welcome back. Once again, it's Dr. DeShavo, your pathophysiology instructor. Any questions, please shoot me an email. I'd be happy to get back to you. Okay? So hepatobiliary and pancreatic pathophysiology. So hepato is obviously liver. We know that is the prefix. Biliary is going to reference the whole biliary system, which creates bile. Okay? So your gallbladder is going to store it, your liver is going to create it, and we're going to look at that whole tubular system that's going to allow bile to pass through those tubes and get to the digestive system because that's where we need to get bile in order for bile to help emulsify fats and to emulsify a fat means basically to surround it so it is able to be distributed through the fluids of the GI tract, okay? Just like we emulsify fats or distribute them through water so they can be evenly spaced. If you think about, um, I always use uh, salad dressing as an example. Salad dressings have, some of them do, some of them don't, have emulsifiers that spread the oils out in it so it doesn't separate. Okay. So when you look at a salad dressing that doesn't separate it into oil and water, that has been emulsified. We need to do that with the fats or they're going to settle out of the solution of the plasma or the fluids of the bloodstream as well as the fluids of the GI tract. Okay, And pancreas is our pancreas. Now keep in mind that the pancreas is going to have an endocrine function, which we spoke about in our endocrine pathophysiology lecture. But the pancreas is also going to have GI function, guys. It deals with digestion of our carbs and lipids and proteins. It's a huge component of breaking down those three macronutrients, okay? So moving on, the gross anatomy of the liver. So we've got a lot of blood going into the liver. I'm going to talk to you exactly how that, how that happens in a few slides, okay? So it's very blood rich. And the reason that it's blood rich is it will filter our blood in process nutrients. So if we can start to get this concept in our head. We bring nutrients from the GI tract to the liver to process nutrients. We'll process carbs, which give us our energy. We'll process fats, which help oh, multiple functions in the body. Okay, and we'll also process proteins. So we need to bring this nutrient-rich blood, I'll tell you exactly how that happens, to the liver to be processed in order to send it into our bloodstream to go to our systemic circulation. Okay, so the anatomy of the liver, and this probably all is starting to ring a bell, but I think it's really important to review the anatomy and learn the anatomy so you can understand the function and the disease processes of the liver. So there are four lobes, the right lobe, the left lobe, the caudate, and the quadrate. And I have a picture, okay? We also have ligaments. Those ligaments are going to be on the front side of the liver. They're called the falciform and the round. I'm going to show you a picture. There's what's called the hepatic artery, the portal vein. That it shouldn't say cut. That should say duct. I, I apologize. Sometimes I get typing so fast that I, I have typos. 
Okay, and I, I uploaded this lecture. I didn't correct it because I don't know. I, I, I just, I don't know what I did. So that should be duct, okay? And that duct is actually gonna be the hepatic duct, which is gonna bring bile salts from the liver. Okay, so the hepatic artery is going to bring the blood supply to the liver itself. Because don't forget that we actually have, um, you know, the liver cells, the connective tissue of the liver, and all those structures have to get nutrients, and they have to get um, blood supply with um, oxygen in it, okay? And then we need to get rid of waste from the liver tissue itself and carbon dioxide from the liver tissue itself. So its own blood supply is called the hepatic artery. And then there's a um, hepatic vein as well. And I'm sure I've mentioned this earlier when we were talking about um, arterial supply. Quite often, I don't talk about veins because veins in the body are usually the same name as the artery. So I tend to get a little lazy with that and I apologize, but the hepatic artery also has a hepatic vein. Now there are some exceptions, you know, jugular vein um, is going to be an exception, greater saphenous vein. I'm going off on a tangent. I apologize. I had too much caffeine this morning. Anyway, so the hepatic artery is going to bring nice fresh blood to the liver tissue itself. The hepatic vein will drain it out. Okay, all the waste and then carbon dioxide. Now the portal system, we're gonna talk specifically about the portal system in a few slides. But once again, planting the seed, the portal vein is going to bring nutrient rich blood that is drained okay, from the digestive tract. We eat our good food, we send it to the GI tract, and then our body has a series of blood vessels that will drain the GI tract of that nutrient-rich blood, and it sends it to the liver to be processed. The liver is key. The liver is key to processing these nutrients, okay? So a portal vein does that. It's called, to be complete, hepatic portal vein, okay? And there's a duct. Once again, cross that off, please, and put hepatic duct. The hepatic duct also leaves at this common area called the porta hepatis, and I'll show you a picture of the porta hepatis in just a second. And the hepatic duct is going to drain bile salts from the liver. Okay, the liver is going to create bile salts, and it drains it from the liver and sends it into what's called the biliary system. Biliary being bile system. Okay, it's a series of ducts that will drain bile salts from the liver and either send it to the GI tract to emulsify fats or it'll send it to the gallbladder to be stored. Okay, so in, I'm going to show you a picture of that whole bile system in a second. The hepatic duct will join with um, the cystic duct from the gallbladder to form a common bile duct. I'll show you a picture. I'll make it much more clear. Okay, so that's a gross anatomy. Let's get into pictures. I really like showing people pictures and explaining them. And the really cool thing about this new program is that I can draw. And so I'm gonna get my tool here, okay. And here I am, okay, this is me drawing, la la la. So here's the right lobe of the liver. Here is the left lobe of the liver, because don't forget that we're talking about looking at this person as if they're in an anatomical position. So this would be as if we're looking at the patient. Don't forget, of course, we know the liver is in the upper right-hand quadrant. I know we know that. But this would be the right lobe. This would be the left lobe, okay? Right down the center here is the falciform ligament, okay? All the way down. And what it does is it actually emerges from the two sides or the two lobes of the liver. And if you can imagine, it then continues onto the anterior of our body. And it um, then reflects onto the body. And what it is, is it's serous membranes, okay? Um, if you remember those serous membranes that release serous fluid to decrease friction in the abdominal cavity. It's a layer of serous membrane that is between the two lobes of the liver and then it separates and it reflects onto the anterior chest wall and it can, it's a continuation of those serous membranes 
So we can release serous fluids all around the abdominal cavity to decrease friction. Okay, so falciform ligament. So if we were to look at a cadaver and open up the abdominal region, in order to um, see the full liver, we would have to cut this falciform. That's why it's hard to see it. It's a cut remnant of that falciform ligament. Okay. At the bottom, we actually have, it looks like a continuation. See this little segment? Oh, sorry. Well, it's not all there. It, it's it's within the circle. I don't know what happened there. Okay, this is the round ligament. Okay, it's not part of the falciform ligament. It actually is a totally different structure, and it continues down and actually is cut. In the human specimen, it would continue down, 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 and it would actually end up at the umbilicus. Okay. Oh boy, this is gonna be tough to um umbilicus it's tough to write okay umbilicus <laughs> umbilicus okay so oh i feel like i'm like a preschooler <laughs> umbilicus oh you ass sorry everybody wow okay and that looks like a second grade handwriting but you get the idea this rail ligament comes down and it goes to the umbilicus, so it's been cut in order for them to take this human liver out so we can take a picture of it. It is vestigial from the umbilical or from the fetal blood supply. And right from when we have the umbilical vein, okay, and what'll happen is the maternal blood supply will feed blood into the umbilicus and it travels up through this umbilical vein and then it goes actually it bypasses the liver, it goes right behind it or right through it, I should say, up to the heart and it sends that nice fresh maternal blood supply into the heart to be pumped out to the fetal body. Is that really cool? So what happens when a baby is born? is they take their first breath, they increase intra-abdominal pressure, and bam, shuts the surround ligament down, or it shuts that umbilical vein down, turns it into a solid piece of connective tissue called the round ligament, also called the ligamentum teres, okay? So those are just interchangeable, round ligament, inter, inter, um, ligamentum teres. So does it do anything for us as we get older? No, it doesn't do anything for us. It's just left over. It's hanging out there, okay, left over from the umbilical vein. Pretty kind of cool little structure. Now we could also see dot gallbladder, okay, and dot gallbladder pretty consistently is on the underside um, and backside of the liver. Now here we look at the backside of the liver. We've got the right lobe, put a dot on the right lobe, put a dot on the left lobe. This is caudate, okay, and if you remember from anatomy and physiology, Caudate. Caudal means towards the feet. So it's it's towards the top though, because embryologically speaking, this actually starts towards the bottom and it ends up towards the top. Because don't forget, with embryology, things twist and turn as they develop. If you don't remember, they do. Okay. So caudate lobe. And then this little lobe down here, shazam, is quadrate. Okay. Because it's somebody thought it looked four sided. Okay, there's the four, four lobes of the lo liver. Now, we've got, um, do they have, oh, here's the porta hepatis that we spoke about as well. Put a little dot next to it. Okay, so the porta hepatis is going to be this region here. Shoop. Okay, porta hepatis is going to contain, contain the hepatic artery, hepatic portal vein, and also um, the duct. Okay, the hepatic duct. Well, they have bile duct here. That should say hepatic duct. Okay, coming from the liver. That's weird. Looking to see if, well, whatever. Okay, and there's your ligamentum teres as well. Okay. So, <clears throat> pardon me, moving on down to um, blood supply. Oops. Oh, this is not letting me forward. Hold on a second. Um, okay, we are having technical difficulties. Um, I'm stuck. Try erasing. Well, let me try tapping. Oh dear. Okay, hold on. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, here we go. Sorry about that. 
new learning process. So blood supplies, this blank neck circulation. Now, this blank neck circulation is going to be the blood supply that will supply fresh, oxygenated, and nutrient-rich blood to the whole GI tract, okay? If you can imagine, and I actually have a picture, so let's run through the names and then I'll show you a picture. If you can imagine the abdominal aorta coming down, it, it passes um, through the diaphragm, and if that's not familiar, please go look at it. It should be familiar. Okay, it passes through the diaphragm. We see the abdominal aorta coming down, and there are singular branches coming off the front part of the abdominal aorta which is unusual, right? We usually have bilateral when we have our named arteries, okay? You know, think of your radial, think of your brachial, think about your subclavian. They're usually bilateral. So this is unusual, they're singular, okay? We've got celiac trunk at the top, I'm gonna show you a picture. That celiac trunk uh, will divide into gastric, hepatic, and splenic, I'm gonna show you a picture. But while we're here, please make a note, I'm gonna draw again, I think I'll be able to do this. Okay, bear with me. Superior mesenteric right here is going to provide blood from the duodenum to the transverse colon. Okay, so make a note while we're here that the superior mesenteric is going to, I'm not gonna write it because you saw how bad the writing was before, is going to provide blood from the duodenum to the transverse colon, okay? And if you think back to the GI tract and the anatomy of the GI tract, and if, if you were not quite familiar, I would go back and refresh your memory. It's one big long tube, and it's a series of different structures along that big long tube. Okay, we've got pharynx, you know, the three parts of the pharynx leading to the esophagus. The esophagus leads to the stomach. The stomach leads to the duodenum. The duodenum leads to the jejunum, jejunum, to ileum, ileum to cecum, which is the first part of the colon, cecum to ascending colon, ascending colon to transverse colon, transverse colon to descending colon, to sigmoid, to rectum. It's one big long tube. But then there are different structures along that whole tube, okay? So if that's not ringing a bell, please go back and, and refresh your memory, okay? Because I'm giving you the blood supply in order from stomach all the way to rectum. Okay, so the celiac trunk is going to hit stomach, liver, and spleen. Superior mesenteric will provide blood supply from duodenum to transverse colon and everything in between. That's why I want you to know the order. Okay, so superior mesenteric is going to provide, excuse me, blood supply from duodenum to transverse colon and everything in between. Inferior mesenteric is going to provide blood supply from transverse colon to rectum and everything in between, okay? So jot that down, I'll repeat it one more time. Superior mesenteric, okay, celiac trunk is gonna provide to stomach, liver, spleen, gastric hepatic splenic. And then superior mesenteric is going to provide blood supply from duodenum, some people say duodenum, okay? They're interchangeable, don't let it blow your mind. Well, I'm sure it didn't blow your brain. But anyway, so duodenum to transverse colon. Inferior mesenteric provides blood supply from transverse colon to rectum. And once again, this provides nice, nourishing, oxygenated, nutrient-rich blood to keep those tissues healthy. Okay? So I think I need to get off of this. Good. Moving down to the blood supply and a picture thereof. Okay? We've got, this is diaphragm. You can see abdominal aorta piercing the diaphragm. Let me get my little draw in here. Get my draw on. Okay. So this is so this would be thoracic aorta and above. Okay, that's an arrow. Here's our diaphragm. Here's our abdominal aorta from here on down. Okay, arrow. Now off of this we've got celiac trunk. And you can see that celiac trunk is going to split off to, I'm just going to put a dot next to them, splenic, gastric, okay, and part of the duodenum, okay, and hepatic. And there's more branches than that. I just want you to know in general, splenic, gastric, hepatic, okay. Then moving on down, we then come to 
the superior mesenteric artery, okay? Superior mesenteric artery, as I told you, is going to go from part of the duodenum or duodenum to the transverse colon, okay? Now, Su or inferior mesenteric is going to be the most inferior of this blank neck blood supply. And it will supply blood from the rest of the transverse colon all the way down to the rectum. Okay? And then the anal arteries actually come from a lower blood supply. But I believe. Okay? So inferior mesenteric will cover the rest. Okay? So that's a splanchnic blood supply. That's going to provide nice fresh, fresh blood supply basically to the whole GI tract from these three stingular branches. Okay? All right. So moving down, hepatic portal circulation, total different concept. Okay? Total different concept. Hepatic portal circulation will be a series of veins. And I just want to refresh your memory right now that an artery is a blood vessel that moves away from the heart. A vein is a blood vessel that moves towards the heart. It's not whether it has oxygenated blood or nutrient-rich blood. It's the definition is an artery moves away, a vein moves toward. So Keep in mind that these are veins which will be nutrient rich. They are moving towards the heart. Okay, so they're moving towards the heart. They're nutrient rich because they're going to be pulling nutrient rich blood from the GI tract. We're going to eat our foodstuffs. Our foodstuffs will cut across different membranes of the GI tract and move into um, veins that are surrounding the GI tract and take that nutrient rich. Um, foodstuffs and put it into this blood supply called the hepatic portal circulation. There are veins, a series of veins that drain the spleen, the pancreas, the stomach, and the intestines. Okay. It'll drain the spleen because it'll take broken down red blood cells to the liver to be processed so we can get rid of those broken down red blood cells. Okay. So and we'll talk about um, that whole process in a little bit. Okay. So, it'll increase after a meal, okay? So, after we eat food, more blood supply will come, um, go to the GI tract and help the draining of that nutrient-rich food stuff. It'll all be delivered into one singular vein called the hepatic portal vein, okay? That hepatic portal vein will then go into the liver. That liver will through a very many multiple, I mean, this would be a whole class unto itself, um, multiple um, processes of, you know, carbs and lipids and prote uh, proteins, excuse me, okay? It'll process all this food stuff. And then there's really cool structure um, or series of structures. So passing through the backside of the liver is the inferior vena cava. If we go back up, let me see. Okay, you can see, I'm going to go back to drawing, and this is adding a little time on, but that's okay. Because I really think, I just, I love this. I don't know why I just do. So, okay, so liver processes all these nutrients, sends it to a series of veins, which eventually drain into the inferior vena cava. And there's a sulcus for the inferior vena cava right here on the back side. And there's a series of veins all over the liver, which will drain all that nutrient rich processed blood to the inferior vena cava. And where's the inferior vena cava go? Goes up to the Shazam heart. Oh, that's a sad looking heart. It's a broken heart. Hopefully it's not broken in our patients. Goes up to the heart, and then the heart pop, pumps out all that nutrient-rich blood to the body. Brilliant. Okay? So, going back down a couple of slides. So, here we go. So, I think we I think we finished that. Um, processing in the liver, blood is sent to inferior vena cava, and then start to the heart to be distributed to the whole body. Love it. Really brilliant anatomical structure. So here we go. Here's the hepatic portal vein system. Oh, I should say the hepatic portal system, right? Because we have a series of different veins. And they're actually, you could see, named the opposite of that whole arterial system that we just learned, right? 
the arterial system that brings fresh blood to those organs to provide nutrients to them. You can see we've got um, the splenic vein is going to drain into the hepatic portal vein, bringing all those red blood cells on over to be broken down. We'll talk about that in uh, one of our future lectures. Inferior mesenteric vein is going to drain the GI tract, send it to the hepatic portal vein. Same thing, duodenum to transverse colon. Superior mesenteric vein is going to drain from transverse colon down to rectum. And we are going to drain that. That's not going to be a lot of nutrients. It's going to be mostly water. Um, okay. Excuse me. And the pancreas is going to send <coughs> substances as well. Okay. All right. Um, it has umbilical vein there, but um, that's going to be shut down. This must have been fetal blood supply. Sorry about that. But anyway, um, so that's going to be shut down. That's going to be the ligamentum teres. Sorry about that. So I'm just sort of imagine that's not there. Okay. So that's going to be the hepatic portal circulation. All right. I think that's all we're going to do for today because it's already 26 minutes. I am going to check on out with you guys. Goodbye. I just love this. And I hope you guys have a great day. As always, if you have any issues, you want to talk to me and let me know. And uh, shoot me an email. I'd be happy to get back to you. And I'd send you off with some music, but it seems a little hard to do with this. So I'm not going to. I'm just going to stop it. And I hope you have a great day. Take care, guys. Have a great day. Bye.